In 1987, a little Disney show called DuckTales, based on the old Scrooge McDuck comics, was aired on television. It would end up being a massive success. Also the same year, a little game developer company called Capcom released a small game on the Nintendo, called Mega Man. Two years later, Capcom would get the rights to develop a game based on DuckTales. And here it is! Released in 1989 for the original Nintendo, DuckTales. It's a nice and solid platformer where you take the role of Scrooge McDuck to get all the treasures located in different parts of the world, and the moon, and collect as much money as you can. You pick your stages a la Mega Man, you have the Amazon, Transylvania, the African Mines, the Himalayas, and finally, the moon. You clear each stage to face off the final boss, and collect the final treasure of the game, that's it. The game itself has an amazing soundtrack for the NES, which isn't surprising because it's done by Capcom. Overall, it's a simple, addicting, and fun NES game, with my only real gripe being some of the enemy's hitboxes, and the stage time limit feels rather annoying in some stages, especially in Transylvania, where you would want to actually explore a bit more, but the time limit doesn't let you. Now with that out of the way. Announced in 2013, Capcom announced DuckTales Remastered, this time developed by the legendary developers WayForward Technologies, known for the games like Shantae, Mighty Switch Force, that kind of stuff. And this time it's only published by Capcom. The game would later release later that year in 2013 for the Wii U, PS3, and the Xbox and it was later released for Android and iOS in 2015. The game would later be pulled from online stores in August of 2019 due to licensing issues, a common concern on games based on IPs. With the removal of the games, it would end up making the physical version of the game skyrocket in price, and thankfully in March of the dreaded year 2020, the game would come back to digital stores, but not ported to anything else past the 7th generation of consoles. I originally played this game on my PS3 since it was free on PS Plus in December of 2014. Anyway, I'll be playing the Steam release for this review, who was kindly gifted to me by Katamari, who spent a whopping $3.74. Let's begin. If the original DuckTales on NES was the original Mega Man, I would say this is much closer to Mega Man powered up on the PSP. Since first off, you start off with a new stage, and it has new cutscenes in all the stages. The core gameplay of the game stays the same, with the same basic jump, pogo, and golf attack. And in the options you can use to use the NES style pogo instead of just holding down the, the attack button, so that's good for your old school purists. I will say the original is rather straightforward since it's usually just get to the end with the occasional cameo from the cast, but now every stage is like its own episode, ripped straight from the old TV show, just with its own little twist. It takes cue from the original game's layout of the stage, and it changes it up a little bit with its own little mandatory collectibles, like coins or pieces of a spell, that sort of thing. Like in the original, you can go through each stage in any order, and in each stage there's an overall story to get each treasure. But let's start the story with the beginning. This starts off at this title screen, yes really, where it shows the Beagle Boys going full Bomberman in Scrooge McDuck's money bin, and breaking in. Scrooge notices and hurries to the money bin, and inside the money bin, the Beagle Boys take over the security and captures Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Scrooge saved the kids one by one, and they arrive to his money vault, where one of the Beagle Boys fight him. He gets defeated and leaves. Scrooge wonders why they were after a certain painting. Turns out that painting had a paper that was some sort of treasure map and that map would reveal treasure located around the world, and the moon. So, in order, we begin with the Amazon. Where Scrooge McDuck and my personal favorite Disney afternoon character, Launchpad McQuack, arrive via helicopter, and are looking for the scepter of the Incan King. While looking around, Scrooge manages to find some coins with small emblems. He later finds his stone thing where the coins are able to be inserted. With all the coins inserted, it shows the way to the Temple of the Clouds. And with the help of Launchpad, he makes it there. While inside the temple that's full of natives and rats, Mrs. Beakley is there. Scrooge ends up finding the scepter and now has to fight Olmec from the Legends of the Hidden Temple. Once defeated, the temple implodes on itself and Scrooge manages to escape with Launchpad. In the ground, the natives appear and it turns out the natives are happy that they destroyed the temple. Scrooge asks for the scepter and they give it to him. Turns out they were using it as a back scratcher. Next up, Transylvania. <laughs> Whoops, uh, wrong game, my bad. Watch my Castlevania anniversary review, link in the description down below. Anyway, Scrooge, Dewey, Huey, Louie, and Webby arrive at the Count Dracula Ducks, or as I like to call them, Count Duckula's Castle. Inside the castle, Webby tries to go on ahead while Dewey, Louie, and Huey chase after her and then fall into a trap. And Scrooge goes to save them one by one, defeating a ghost, who is actually a Beagle Boy. 
Anyway, defeating one drops a paper and it turns out it's a spell. While finding his way to the other Beagle Boys, Scrooge goes through the minecart level from Donkey Kong Country, and Scrooge finds a mirror that has the same inscription as the spell. Defeating the other two Beagle Boys completes the spell, and it turns out Magic of the Spell from the episode Send in the Clones is behind this. Scrooge chases after her, and after a literal Castlevania-style fight, she's defeated, and Scrooge collects the coins of the Lost Realm. Moving on to the African Mines, looking for the giant diamond of Inner Earth, they arrive to the cave site where Gyro is working on a... something. Scrooge workers run away, fearing that they heard ghosts coming from the mine, so he tries to descend down the mine, but before he can do that, he needs to find a key. So he finds a key to the elevator and goes down. Further down the mine, some ball-like creature appears. Turns out they are the Terraformians from the episode Earthquack. The king gets mad because Scrooge McDuck is interfering with the great games. The king later finds out that it was Scrooge who has been digging in the mine, and he fights Scrooge because he's mad about it. Once defeated, the king gives up, and Scrooge tells him to stop because he is scaring off his workers. He shows that he only wants diamonds, and the king tells him that they are garbage rocks, and gives him the giant diamond of inner earth. Next up is the Himalayas, so they can find the lost crown of Genghis Khan. But before we go, Webby wants to go, but Scrooge says no. Anyway, we begin with Launchpad being Launchpad with a crash, and they're lucky because he knows he can fix the plane. With his regulator, which he drops. Scrooge takes matters into his own hands and goes to find the regulator, only to find out that it's been taken apart by these snow bunnies. So Scrooge goes to find the parts. While looking for parts, he finds a Bubba the Cave Duck from the episode Mark in Time. And Bubba helps to break through the rocks, and after he helps out, Scrooge tells him to go meet up with Launchpad so they can go home. After collecting the final piece, he meets up with Launchpad who is still fixing the plane, and it turns out while fixing it, Webby pops out as it turns out she was stowing away to see the crown. While finally heading towards the Shadow Pass, Flint Heart Glomgold, Scrooge's nemesis, appears taunting him. He says bombs and beagle boys, and Scrooge sends it right back. And he goes down. Arriving at Shadow Pass, he hears a roar, and Scrooge goes to check it out, and it's a Yeti! One that's bigger than the original NES one, that's for sure. Anyway, once again, once defeated, Webby tells Scrooge to stop, and it turns out that Yeti is in pain by a thorn. And it turns out that thorn was the lost crown of Genghis Khan. And with that, we finally have the moon. Let's get this out of the way. Yes, the theme is amazing, and it deserves all the praise it gets. We have Scrooge, Gyro, and Fenton Crackshell arriving at the moon, where they're able to breathe in space thanks to Gyro's Oxychew Taffy, which, funny enough, it was first shot off here and then later integrated to the reboot series. They're here to find the green cheese of longevity. So a UFO appears and abducts Fenton. Scrooge makes chase of the UFO, and inside the UFO, Scrooge sees pieces of what Fenton was carrying, Gizmo Duck's suit, locked behind a laser door. Later finding and freeing Fenton, he is finally able to collect the suit parts. Three suit parts later, and Scrooge meets up with both Fenton and Gyro back in the spaceship. Scrooge sends Gyro back into the ship, so Fenton can become Gizmo Duck. And they leave while Gyro walks out finding a $2 million bill. Gizmo Duck helps clean the way to find the green cheese of longevity, when suddenly a ton of Beagle Boys rush in and Glumgold appears again to taunt Scrooge, and Gizmo Duck gives chase. Making his way through the moon cave, he finds the green cheese of longevity and a rat appears and eats it, and he mutates. No, not the cheese. Anything but that. Once the rat is defeated, he spits out the cheese, and Scrooge picks up the final treasure. Back in the money bin after collecting all the treasures, it turns out Glumgold was the one who put the Beagle Boys on the raid on Scrooge's money bin. And he takes Scrooge's nephews hostage, and all he wants is the last treasure, and he takes it. Suddenly, Magic of the Spell appears, and freezes them. And she takes the treasures to himself, and informs the treasures are all part of a spell to summon Count Duckula. And she also wants Scrooge's number one dime, which is a nod to the first episode she's in. This time, nothing will stand in the way of what I want most in the world. Ah, what? Turn me back into a man? 
No, Scrooge McDuck's old number one dime. It's first time Scrooge ever made. It contains the psychic vibrations of every deal, every decision, every dollar Scrooge has ever made. So she takes his nephews and pigs the Beagle Boys. After she leaves, Scrooge decides to make a deal with Glumgold, and they head for Mount Vesvius. Scrooge texts to the volcano and makes it at the end. Magica shows herself, and Scrooge pulls out his dime, and Glumgold backstabs him. And she uses the treasures to summon Count Ducula. Oh, boo-hoo. No time for buyer's remorse from old Hadwin. Better to stick with master plan. It's much more exciting. I now summon Dracula Duck. Behold! Dracula Duck, I, Magic of the Spell, have summoned you to do my bidding. You must obey my will and mine alone. <laughs> and my will is that you destroy this meddling old fool. And with that, we have the final boss. After many hits later, Count Ducula kind of, uh, Dracula's himself, and his nephews are saved. And Scrooge makes chase after Magicka and Glumgold, because they have his number one dime. The dime jumps into a rock and becomes a pillar, and all make chase. Scrooge gets his dime back while Magicka and Glumgold seem to escape for the moment. Moments later, the launch pad saves Scrooge, and they reminisce about the experience. One newspaper translation later, and it turns out Glumgold has been captured, and was taken away. But he's rich, so he'll be there for, I don't know, an hour at worst. Anyway, Scrooge and his nephew celebrate, and that's the end with the credits roll, with the main DuckTales theme, with vocals this time. And we also get this amazing rendition of the moon theme, and that's the game. So as you can see, it takes many cues from the original NES game, and flips it up a bit to a more straightforward approach to the levels thanks to the maps. While I do think the remaster is a bit more difficult compared to the original game, but I think the differences help out specifically in the Transylvania stage. And speaking of Transylvania, in the original NES version, instead of fighting Count Ducula at Mount Vestavus, you actually fight him in Transylvania. And of course, one of the major differences is the voice acting. Thanks for the lift, launch bud. No problemo. Lift is one of my favorite principles of aerodynamics. No, oh, say, you got your radio, Mr. McD? Hey, of course I do. Great, then I'll be your eyes in the sky. Oh, I'd be happy if you just keep your eyes on the sky for once. What an airhead. Hey, I heard that. So this game is no longer barred to its limits of 1989. This game has voice acting, and they brought back most of the original voice actors, like Scrooge, The Nephews, Launchpad, Duckworth, and even Magicka. So it really gives off the feel of the original show. Anyway, DuckTales for the NES did get a sequel. But the remaster did it, and I think it's a shame because DuckTales 2 is really good and really expensive. And you know, it might be cool if, you know, they get the reboot cast. The reboot's really good. Speaking of the reboot, the reboot really took inspiration from the game, especially in Season 2. Uh, quick spoilers here. Where Della Duck, the triplet's mother, sang her lullaby, and it's the moon theme from the original game. Look to the stars, my darling baby boys. Life is strange and vast. With and, joys. and and I personally find it as an amazing tribute to the original game. Now this might be more difficult to recommend because any day now the game could be pulled off again. So get it while you can because it's actually really good. Also get the Disney Afternoon Collection which has the original DuckTales game and its sequel but it also has two Chippendale games, Darkwing Duck and Tailspin. So uh, also get that while you can, because it's digital only, and it's not on Switch for some godforsaken reason. Oh yeah, I have the mobile port too. It's alright, it works fine on my S20, even supports the wider displays. While the game remains at 16x9, the controls move on to the edge, which I find great. Too bad the game was pulled off from the App Store. I was just lucky enough to own it. It's still really good, it just has yet to be re-released, which is a shame. Anyway. I've been Fonzie. Follow me on Twitter at Fonzie's Revenge. Follow me on Twitch at, at Fonzman, where I accidentally uninstalled Tease Fantasy X. And I've been streaming, I don't know, whatever I've been streaming. And remember, those streams get archived too to my second channel. So, yeah. That's DuckTales. Woohoo!